Ciao friends and welcome to a new video from SQL BI. In this video, I want to introduce the concept of variables and how to use them in order to obtain better code. Learning how to use variables is extremely important because uh, using a lot of variables in your code makes the code easier to debug, easier to read, most of the time also faster. Nonetheless, we need to understand a couple of important details about variables, how they work when you store a table in a variable, and how to take advantage of variables in order to split the execution in multiple steps. Let me show you some examples where we start writing code without variables first, then we introduce variables, and then we reason on top of the topic in order to understand how to use them the best way. As an example, Let's create a measure that, com that computes uh, the sales per customer. Sales per customer requires you to compute two values, the sales amount and the number of customer. Then you divide one by the other and you obtain the sales per customer. You can write everything as a single expression. So we can start a new measure. Sales per customer, a sales per customer where we divide the sales amount that require us to compute sum x over sales of sales quantity times a sales net price. And we divide this by the distinct count of sales customer key. This code works just fine, there are no problems, and it computes the correct value. We format it as a decimal number, then we place it in the report, and that produces the number that we were expecting. Nonetheless, you see that uh, it's not easy to understand uh, what is the meaning of this sum x, uh, what is the meaning of this distant count, because uh, we do not have a name, we have an expression, and every time we read the code, we need to read, understand it, and then picture what is the meaning of that value. Using variables makes your code so much easier to read because you can just provide a name for an expression. So a much better, a much better way of writing this code is just write a first variable, sales amount, where we store the first expression. Let me cut it from here and we store it here. Now that I have defined the variable, I, can, I need to add a return part, and in the return part, I can use the variable. I can write sales amount. Now I split the execution of the sales amount from the usage of sales amount. So I provide a name for an expression to make the code more readable. And I can add multiple variables in the same block. So I can write a number of customer, by just computing the distant count of sales customer key. Let's go on a new line to make it even more readable. And then I divide the, num the sales amount by the number of customer. This code is now easier to read. It produces the very same result as the previous one, but by providing a name for expressions, it is much easier to read the content of my DAX code. So using variables makes the code a lot more readable. Most newbies believe that variables are only tied to performance. So you should start using variables when you have performance issues or when you want to get the best out of your DAX code. That is for sure true, but it is by far not the most compelling reason why to use variables. We use variables mainly to make the code more readable. Moreover, as soon as the code becomes more complex, it is very easy to use variables to split the execution of code in multiple steps. And we have the feeling that we have some sort of imperative language, where each individual step is executed as part of a more complex flow. That is not actually happening in DAX. Variables are not evaluated one after the other. The DAX expression is evaluated as a whole, but as humans, it is much easier to read the code if you split the execution in multiple variables. This is much, much more important as soon as you learn that variables can store not only values, but also tables. So by doing execution of uh, table expression one after the other, you can make the code more readable. 
Let me show you that with some examples. Actually, before moving further, I want to show you where you can define variables. Then we will move to the next steps later. A variable can be defined at the beginning of an expression as we are doing here. So we have uh, one variable, a second variable, and then in the return part. But actually, you can use a variable wherever you want in your code. The block var and return define by itself an expression. So nothing prevents you from defining variables also here, for example. Inside the SAMEX, you can start a new var block. And we can define, for example, a variable to contain the quantity where we store the value of sales quantity. Then another variable with the net price where we store the sales net price. And then in the return part, we can use quantity times net price. Now we do have two blocks of variable. One is the outer block var with this return. And then we have inside it another block var return, one nested into the other. Now, this is probably a bit excessive uh, as the usage of variables because uh, the previous code was actually more readable. But it was important just to show you that you can nest var return blocks one inside the other. And in complex expression, that might come extremely useful. With that said, I want to show you more complex examples of code. So let's pretend that we want to compute the sales of the top 10 customers or the top 10 products. Instead of computing the sales amount for all the products, we want to restrict it to only the top 10. That requires finding the top 10 products and then compute the sales amount over the top 10 products. Therefore, the code starts to be a bit more intricate and using variable helps a lot in splitting the code in separate steps. Let me show you that. I want to compute the sales of the top 10 products. So I start a new measure and I first need to find the top 10 products. So I can write the measure name, best product sales. And I want the top 10 products that can be stored in a variable, best product. And I use top n over product. Oh, top n 10 product order by sales amount product needs to be enclosed in quotes best products now contains a table and that is relevant you can store tables inside variables so now that i have my top top 10 products i can compute their sales amount so i can compute sales of best products and i can start an iteration using some x over the table uh, over the best products so i create a row context that now is not iterating a table in the model it's iterating my variable and this is already important and useful to understand what is happening because what i want to compute is the sales of the top 10 products and this time I do not want to use the net price. I want to use the product unit price. So to do that, I do another sum X. So I iterate over sales. I cannot just iterate over sales because I want the sales of the current product. So I need to use related table sales. This is the first important detail. I can use related table while iterating a variable. Even though we tend to think that the result of my top n is actually stored inside the variable, the engine is a bit more complex than this. The engine keeps the data lineage. So my variable contains a table that contains products, therefore, it inherits all the relationships of the product table. And I can use related table to obtain the sales that are related to the current row in best product. And now I want to compute the sales quantity, which I can do because I have a row context containing sales. And I would like to multiply it by the unit price that is stored in best product. 
Now, it would be lovely to be able to write best products uh, unit price, uh, but this is not going to work. I cannot reference uh, the col a column inside a variable by using the variable name. The first part of a column reference always needs to be a table. I need to use the base table. If I use product unit price, uh, this is going to work nicely. Now I have my sales of best product that works and I can use return sales of best products, which is my final result. You see that by splitting the execution using variables, we are now able to understand better how the code works. I can just hit enter, use best product sales once it is formatted, just to make sure that it works place it in my report, and that again computes the value of uh, the sales for only the top 10 products for each individual brand. Using variable has not only a benefit in terms of performance, it also has uh, um, a benefit in terms of readability in the code. And to me, this is by far the most important detail code that is easier to read is actually easier to debug, it's safer, you can understand it better, therefore it will contain less errors. Nonetheless, you need to pay attention when you use variables, because a variable is a name for an expression, but it also guarantees that the evaluation of that expression happens only once, and this is the reason why variables make the code faster. Sometimes people use variables just as a name for an expression, thinking that the variable will be evaluated in different evaluation contexts. That is not the case. A variable is evaluated once and forever. Once it obtains a value, it never changes. Actually, they are not really variables, they are constants, but we, call, we like to call them variables. Let me show you that with an example. I'm going to compute the percentage of sales against all the products, all the sales, which is a very simple expression to compute. I can just write my percentage. Uh, let me get rid of some of those measures that we do not need anymore. I have the sales amount and I want to compute the percentage of sales against the grand total. That is very simple to author. I will write the entire code, write in PCT. I need to divide SMX over sales of quantity times net price. And I want to divide this by calculate SMX over sales of quantity times net price, same expression. But this time, in a new filter context, uh, uh, let's use remove filters that removes a filter from sales. Okay, my code works just fine. It's computing the, net, um, the sales amount uh, divided by the sales amount in a different filter context uh, where I remove all the filters from sales. And as such, once formatted as a percentage, works just fine. I can place it in my report and it shows my percentage with 100%. Now, what if I decide to optimize it? I might just copy the entire piece of code and write a new measure. Let's call it percentage wrong. And I might notice that I'm using an expression here and the very same expression there. Therefore, this looks like a perfect usage for a variable. And I can start a variable where I store my sales amount. So I write, I take the code of the expression, and then in the return part, I use a sales amount here, and I can also remove this. Now, this code looks more simpler to read. So uh, instead of writing some X twice, I can now just have sales amount and sales amount but it's not going to work. And the reason is uh, the value of sales amount is compute once and forever. Even though I change the filter context using remove filter of sales, the value of sales amount here and the value of sales amount here, they are exactly the same. Therefore, this measure is wrong and it always returns 100% because uh, in this case, a variable is not your best option. 
In this scenario, using the expression multiple times is required because actually we want to compute different values. Variables are used for readability, for debugging, to make your code simpler, to make your code faster. They are not always needed. Sometimes you need to repeat the same expression because you change the filter context. As you have seen, variables are powerful, simple to use, and they make the code a lot more readable. Whenever I teach my training, both live or in, both online or in person, the simpler rule that I provide to all of my students is whenever you are in doubt between using a variable and not using a variable, just use it. A variable does not hurt. There are some scenarios, some borderline scenarios where actually using a variable might slow down your code, but they are extremely hard to spot. Therefore, most of the scenarios, I would say 99% of the scenarios using a variable produces faster and better code. Learn to use it, to use them because uh, your future yourself will totally love the fact that you use variable to make your code easier to read. What seems easy to read today that you are writing code will no longer seem easy in six months from now when you will probably have forgotten about what you were thinking while writing your measure. So keeping the habit of writing readable DAX code is one of the important skills of any DAX developer. Enjoy DAX! Mm -hmm.